So under firewalls, I now have the virtual SRX device and I can drag the device to the workspace. What I'm also gonna do is drag a network automation Docker container to the workspace, as well as an ethernet switch, which I'm gonna run on the GNS3 VM, as well as a NAT cloud. So it's a fairly simple topology. What I'll do is connect the SRX device to the NAT cloud and then connect it to the ethernet switch and connect the ethernet switch to the Docker container. So there's my topology and I can now start up the devices and open up consoles to them. As you can see here, the SRX is booting up The Docker container has already booted, but I now need to wait for the SRX device to boot. While I'm waiting for that, I'll configure the Docker container with a static IP address. So in this example, I'll configure the IP address of the device is 10.1.1.1. Gateway I'll configure as 10.1.1.254. Name server I'm going to configure as 8.8.8.8. .8 In other words, Google. I'll exit out and save the configuration. So cat Etsy network interfaces shows us the configuration. I'll close this terminal down and turn off the Docker container. Start it up again. And open up a console. So at this point you can see that the Junos device is still booting up and generating keys. And after a while we get our login prompt and we can now log in as root. And again, LS shows us files in this directory, we're in CF root, CD root. Alice shows us the directories and files here. Alice L shows us the directories and files in more detail. And again, this is another reason why you as a network engineer want to learn Linux, because notice this is Linux. So I'm going to type CD to go back to my home directory. But what we actually want to do is go into the CLI and then configure the device. So show run config shows me the configuration. If you come from a Cisco background, you may prefer this output. So run show configuration, pipe display set, and there's our configuration as shown using set commands. So again, run show configuration, pipe display set, run here similar to using do in configuration mode on a Cisco device. Exits configuration mode. So here I could simply type show configuration or show interfaces and specify terse as an example to see the interfaces on this device. You can see that gigabit 000, .0 has already received an IP version 4 address from the NAT cloud. So as an example, I can ping 192.168.122.1. In other words, I can ping the NAT cloud. If I do that, the resolution is not working. I need to use ping inet google.com to use IP version 4, but it's still not being resolved because I need to do some basic configuration. So configure, let's configure a password. So set system root authentication, plain text password. I'll configure a password on the device. And then what I'll do is do some basic configuration, such as setting the hostname of the SRX. I'll set 
the name servers to Google and I'll set the domain name as gns3.com and I'll enable SSH. Now, unlike Cisco iOS, you have to commit to your configuration changes. Those are pending configuration changes. You have to commit them or apply them. So until you commit them, the changes are not done. This is a powerful thing in Junos because you can roll back. So notice now that I have committed the changes, the host name has changed to GNS3 underscore V SRX1. So if I type exit now, can I ping google.com? At the moment, we're getting a host failure. So let's go back to configure and I'm gonna set the interfaces. In this case, I'll configure gigabit ethernet 001, unit zero, family, inet, in other words, IP version four, address as 10.1.1.254 slash 24, and then I'll set gigabit 000, unit zero, family, inet DHCP client. So let's commit our changes, and let's run the show interfaces terse command. We need to get an IP address on this interface. And there you go, we've just received one. So again, can I ping 192.168.122.1? Yes, I can. Can I ping google.com? Yes, I can. Can I ping other websites such as cisco.com? Yes, I can. What about juniper.net? That is resolving, but I'm assuming a firewall is blocking ICMP. So as an example, can I ping configure terminal.com? Yes, I can. Can I ping genus3.com? Yes, I can. So the basics are working here. I can see my external IP address. I can see my internal IP address. Can I ping the Docker container? At the moment, not. Let's check here. This device can ping itself. What about the Juniper device? Not at the moment. Can the Juniper device ping itself? Yes, it can. So we need to do some additional configuration to allow the network automation container or Docker container to ping the Junos device and allow it to access the internet. Now I've put this configuration below the video. We need to do some configuration such as setting security zones and configuring NAT. So what I'm gonna do is copy the configuration onto the SRX device. Now on my Mac, I've had problems copying the configuration. So I'm gonna copy this line by line. So I'm configuring NAT rules, specifying source and destination, NAT rule matches, and then completing the NAT configuration. So again, I've put this configuration below the video so that you can use it. The next thing I'm going to do is enable SSH and HTTPS from the LAN. So I'm gonna enable ping, SSH, HTTP, HTTPS from the LAN interface. And then I'm gonna do something similar for the WAN interface. So HTTP, HTTPS, SSH, Telnet and DHCP. So I'm gonna permit those traffic types. I'll commit to those configuration changes. And then the next thing to do is to enable the web interface. 
So I'm going to do that on both interfaces. And then I'm going to get the system to generate a certificate. So this is very similar to the configuration that I'm using. Again, this is a sample configuration that you can use. But I'll now commit those changes. So I'm hoping that at this point, my SRX device can ping google.com and my Docker container can also ping google.com, which it can. It can ping gns3.com as an example. So I've successfully configured this network so that the network automation container can get to the internet via the SRX device. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I want to wish you all the very best.